Some time ago, we read in a post somewhere uh, that someone had used some Harbor Freight panels uh, out on a boat and they added silicone to it uh, to help uh, prevent water from getting inside of the, um, you know, between the plastic and the panels. Uh, and so that's what we're doing. Now this looks white, but it's gonna dry clear. And uh, so far, so good. So we now have our pipes all wrapped up and uh, so I've got my lengths all set right here uh, I got them joined and what we're doing here is we've got two lines uh, this line here is going to be uh, is going to have a PEX line inside of it this line here is going to have the low and high sensor wires uh, for the solar pump so it's at this part of the video here that I have to make a correction and I'll be making <laughs> several of these corrections uh, there is not a high tank level sensor and a low tank level sensor there is only a high tank level sensor uh, the low sensor that I'm referring to uh, is actually the low well sensor and that sensor is 160 feet or so down in our well so that's already in place uh, when I was installing this I had two sensors and I worked under the assumption that there was a low holding tank sensor and a high holding tank sensor but it was only the high so I now have two sensors in my holding tank uh, and rather than try and pull out the second sensor we're gonna leave it in there and uh, if the high sound server goes bad uh, we have an extra so uh, if uh, yeah so that's that's what we're gonna do uh, you'll see me interject here like this uh, over the course of this video to uh, point that correction out and uh, hopefully uh, provide some context so uh, originally I wanted to add a third line here but it looks like I don't have enough pipe so we're just gonna go with the uh, the one line here. All right, so we've got all of our pipe in the other pipes. So let's kind of walk through and see what we've done. Okay, so we have two pipes, two poly pipes that are gonna get uh, put into the ground. Inside of one is half inch, uh, polypex or poly water line uh, that we're going to be running the water to fill the tank from the well this poly pipe has the two sensors the wires there is not a high tank level sensor and a low tank level sensor there is only a high tank level sensor that are going to be uh, telling the solar pump whether to fill or not fill or you know whether to fill and then to stop so now that we've got the pipes done uh i have to build the styrofoam insulation box that's going to go into this trench but before we do that i need to get a lot of gravel we've been working on this stupid trench trying to bury these water lines for seems like forever the problem we're having is that my water table is ridiculously high. To make matters worse, we've had an unbelievable amount of rain uh, these last several weeks. And it just, it is a backbreaking effort just to try to keep the, this, this, you know, this trench we've dug empty of water. It's taken me all morning just to get this thing emptied out. Uh... I'll kind of show you where we're at. So I've dug out uh, enough to get the pipe into the well or to go from the well. And then we've laid some gravel now. This depth is only 12 to 18 inches deep. As we get a little bit, you know, into this muddy clay section where the sump pump is, uh, that's only about 18 inches deep. And I still need to add about six inches of gravel. So at this lowest point, my water line 
might just be only you know 12 inches down we've done a considerable amount of research and it looks like this foam board uh, is going to help prevent you know us from freezing these lines we were going to use the the uh you know they've, they've got those heat tapes i had thought about attaching that heat tape but it won't fit so we're gonna have to go with this foam board and just pray that uh it works so we'll see what happens so while we wait for the water to recede a little bit um we're gonna start building the the actual insulation box that we're going to be running our our pipes in so the top here we've basically taken styrofoam uh, foam boards and we've overlapped them so for every inch of foam board uh, it's roughly a foot deep so these boards here are three quarter inch uh, and so we've got three of them stacked on top of each other so that's about two and a quarter inches which gives us just over two feet so this is going to be what's on top of the piping what i'm working at right now is making the walls uh, overlapping them the entire length that we're going to build two of these okay, what we're going to do here is make a channel now in this channel here this is where the uh the the pipes we're going to lay the bottom will have one layer of the the foam board now the one thing i didn't mention is that uh so on top of the layer of two and a quarter inch foam board, uh, we are also adding a one inch foam board uh, layer as well. So again, between those, just simply in the insulation, it should give us about three, the, three and a quarter feet, three and a half feet of depth. Uh, and then uh, after we've gotten this thing buried and covered it up to grade, uh, we're then adding a foot of gravel on top of that to really level out that whole area over there. And this is absolutely messy. There's no real way to get around it. I'm gonna have a lot of styrofoam to pick up. Okay, so now that we've built the bottom and the sides, now it's time to lay the pipe and then add the top. All right, so now we've got the base built and we've got the top built and we've run our, our uh, water lines in the center in that open cavity. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top onto the, onto the base, uh, center it into this plastic, and then we're going to take one side of the plastic, wrap it over, Take the other side, wrap it over, and then tape it all together so that it's one big sealed chamber for, per se. So, okay. All right, on three. One, two, three. And the thing about this duct tape is that the only reason we've got it on here is simply to hold all of the pieces together. Once we, now that we're gonna put the plastic over it and we'll duct tape that, that'll really seal everything together. Um, so some of this tape is really loose on here, but that's okay. Uh, Cause again, it's just kind of to hold everything together while we were able to build this. All right, so now I can go towards you a little bit. Yeah, I think as we get as we get this plastic out, we can kind of squeeze it together. Okay. So I'm gonna grab that end. Yeah, it kind of just fits together once we get the plastic in there. Oh, that's perfect. One overlap. Good. 
Dan. Now that we've got this thing completely built, we're going to go ahead and get it into the trench. Yeah, you can start walking that way. So after much discussion, what we've decided to do is to cut a hole in the floor here. And we're going to run our piping up through that hole first. Then we're going to go ahead and lay the insulated box into the trench. And we're going to find out how much distance we have from the bottom of the shed to the end of the insulated box. Use some pipe insulator we're going to wrap it and then we're going to put these sleeves of pvc over it to help protect it against the weather Need to go more towards me. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our insulated box laid in the trench. It was a little tight in some spots. We kind of knew that. And now what we're going to do, adding some gravel to the sides so that it doesn't move anymore. Do you have another ah! shovel? No, I got this. This is part of my ah! homestead weight loss program. Oh yeah? Yeah. Ah! Tell me about it. Well, I've lost like 25 pounds ah! since we've been here. And I've never felt healthier. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how much gravel you and I have moved collectively. Oh, yeah, it's a it's it's astounding how much how much gravel we've had to shovel. Finding out that when homesteaders talk about hard work, this is what they're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, lying. <laughs> lying. Nope. Why aren't you guys helping? Oh, you're just going to chew the bark? Okay. This is what it means to have a true partnership. She loads, I unload. That way, we don't break our necks. 
Yeah, a little longer though. And that is quite all right. You know, I'll tell you another thing. Okay. Having the perfect partner makes this whole journey, this whole lifestyle so much easier. You know, this is, uh, there isn't anybody else in the world I would have wanted to do this with. And that woman right there. She is tough as nails. And she reminds me of that every day. <laughs> But that's the thing is you got to be challenged. You got to be challenged physically, which is what homesteading is. You got to be challenged emotionally and, and mentally. And, you know, this lifestyle, it, you know, there's there's nobody, <laughs> nobody around for a mile from us. I mean, it's just her and I. And, you know, this is a true partnership, I tell you. So in our haste, we kind of forgot that... Uh... We still need to add another layer of foam on top, but we had to push all the gravel that we put on top of it onto the sides and push it back. So it's sitting in its bed. Uh, we're going to finish wrapping the corners and install the PVC pipes uh, at the corners. And then uh, the next step we'll cut our, we've got some one inch uh, foam board we're going to lay it on top, duct tape it in place, and then backfill it. Now the good news is, once we backfill, we're not going to fill it completely up. We have a load of gravel coming in, and once that load of gravel comes, our neighbor, neighbor is going to bring his tractor. And again, we're going to lift the this whole area here behind me where I'm standing up probably about 18 inches. So ultimately, the pipes will be buried about two feet down and it'll have uh, about three and a half inches of foam on top of it. Uh, it's got four inches of foam on the sides and then uh, three quarter inches underneath it. So we're thinking and we hope that with that much insulation and then with, you know, again, the two feet on top, that that should uh, keep us from freezing. Uh, the other thing that's going to help us is both the tank, both the tank shed and the pump house. These are both going to be heated this winter. Uh, we've insulated them. We're going to be putting car defroster, defrosters inside. Uh, they don't put out a lot of heat, but it's going to be just enough heat to keep, keep both of these buildings above freezing. The thought is that we have a lot of extra line and hose on both ends. And the reason we are doing that is that again, because these rooms, the, both of these sheds will be heated with having warmer water in the pipe, putting pressure into this box behind me, uh, we're hoping that that along with all the insulation we've done will keep this water line from freezing. Now, we don't know if this is gonna work, right? This is what we've read. Uh, different things we've talked to people about, a bit different methods. Uh, if it does work, great. If it doesn't work, what we're going to do is we have a hose that has an electrical line wrapped around it. And you simply just plug it into a 110 outlet, which we have. Uh, and then that's what we'll use to get water from the well to the tank. Now we'll probably have to run it once a week. I think, uh, you know, maybe once every you know, few days, whatever the whatever we need to do, but at least that way uh, we'll have water. You know, we were going to run an extra line, but we didn't have enough poly line, um, so we can't use we couldn't do that. Uh, but at least to get us through this first winter, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. So, but don't worry, we'll keep you guys posted. All right, so all of our pipe is in. Uh, the uh, both ends have been placed in the uh, four-inch PVC insulation wrap around it, and then uh, we're going to on the on the tank side. 
we built a uh, small box around the PVC pipe since it actually goes into the ground a little bit. Uh, on this side, uh, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, we're going to start laying the last layer of insulation on the top here, which is one inch uh, foam board. And so I'm going to fill in the sides here and then we'll start laying these things in place. Throw some duct tape on it. We'll be good to go. So I want to recap on the solar that we have set up in this tank house real quick. Uh, it is a 200 watt system that we have set up with uh, using panels from Harbor Freight, uh, charge controller from Harbor Freight, um, uh, battery from Home Depot, which is basically a Renogy 12 volt 200 amp hour. Now, this system, though small, is what is going to not only power the DC pump to our cabin from this holding tank, uh, but it will also run a uh, 12 volt car defroster heater in here, which is what we're going to rely, rely on to keep the temperature above freezing. Uh, this system is identical to the system that is in our pump house. Uh, with the exception that this 12 volt system has 200 watts of uh, panels the pump house only has 100 watts uh, the way this is going to work is you know the panels are up on the roof and on the side of the shed charge controller here charges the battery uh, we will plug the positive and negative to the defroster in here uh, and then uh, I'll add a little on off switch. So, and then we'll also have a thermostat in here as well. Uh, just, a, I'm sorry, just a little uh, thermometer. And so uh, we'll, we'll monitor the temperature. If the temperature gets below, uh, you know, 40 degrees, we'll hit the switch, turn the, the, uh, uh, the heater on and let that run to get that temperature up. I don't foresee any issues with the system. Uh, we will keep the snow off of the panels during the winter time. Uh, and if it does become a problem, uh, the easy solution for us is simply to put a uh, larger ceramic heater in here. Um, although with the with the the shed size and them being insulated, we don't foresee any issues. All right, so now that we've, uh, it's been a day or two since my last video, um, but uh, we're covered. Look at that. We had all of our sand put in and we lifted up the surface here about 18 inches uh, above the water line, which runs from the shed here over to the pump house we are pretty ecstatic because now we get to uh actually put some water in this tank and get this tank hooked up and ready to go before we do that though i have to hook up the sensors uh, we have a low and high water sensor uh, in the tank so i've got to hook that up into the solar uh, system charge it right there so we went ahead and wired up the high sensor wire. We turned on that valve 
water is now flowing through this pipe underground running through the insulated box that we built under Whitco. And we are now filling up our holding tank. This has been a huge, huge milestone for Jen and I. Uh, this is really the first step, well, the second step after getting the well dug uh, to, excuse me, to us getting water into our cabin. Once that cabin or once that holding tank uh, fills up, we can pipe it and we can get water into the cabin and uh, finally, <laughs> finally take showers, wash dishes, all with hot water in our cabin. So uh, thanks for watching this video. We're going to end this here. Um, there'll be another video on all the plumbing and piping and so forth, but, uh, thanks again for watching and uh, God bless you. These two are two peas in a pod. <laughs>